Okay, I'm recording now. All right, so the observer. Okay, so the um, the observer. So how, how do we do the observer? The, the observer is, uh, I would call it um, an, uh, an exercise or a practice for enlightenment. And what it involves is it's an experiential exercise. And for anyone who's new, um, I'm going to use um, a, a remote control here. This is a remote control. Now, as you, if you see an object before you and you observe it, then you'll notice that as you observe an object, you are not the object. So if you see a, an object like a remote control or a cloud in the sky, you, uh, the observing of the cloud is not the cloud. So if you see a cloud, it's quite clear that you're not the cloud. Or if you see a remote control in front of you or on the table, it's very clear that you're not the remote control. You are the observer of the remote control. Now the thing with, um, I call them objects, uh, objects that are, are observed, is that it's very clear that the observer is not the object. And uh, there is clear experiential uh, awareness, shall we say, that uh, the object is out there and is not is not intrinsic to your nature. The observer is not the object. So when you have that as an experiential uh, experience, then you know there's a knowing, you could use the word knowing, that cloud or remote control is not what you are. So the next thing to know, and of course the miracles uh, really hits the nail on the head with this, where it says that all my thoughts are meaningless, knowing that actually a problem in recognizing the eternal self, shall we say, one's intrinsic nature, um, is that if there's identification or if there's meaning given to an object, then there tends to be a loss of clarity in the nature of, the, of what I'd call detached observing of the object. So the problem with thoughts is that if you give thoughts meaning, or if you identify with them, or if those thoughts are special, then what happens in consciousness is it seems like the thoughts are what you are. There's a loss of detached witnessing of the thoughts and the experience is I am the thoughts. So just like you've seen a remote control or a cloud in the sky, or there might be a lamp or, or, or something on the table, uh, can you now be the observer of, of thoughts? Just, uh, you know, th I mean, thoughts are just like clouds in the sky. They're passing by, you know, you have one cloud saying it's sunny today. The next uh, thought might be it's, it's going to rain later. Whatever they are, they're all passing by. So can you be the detached witnesser of thoughts and just sort of let go of hooking into them as if all the thoughts are, are meaningless? You know, they're, they're not important. You can just let them, be, let them pass by without identifying, hooking into them. Uh, and the next thought, what, even if the next, whatever the next thought is, just forget it because it's even the next thought is not special. So as you have this kind of, you know, my, all my thoughts are meaningless type of attitude, it'll open, what will open up is that there is a detached observing. Now, if this de detached observer is in any way hooking into thoughts passing by, then it will seem this is what I'd call an observer which has interest with the passing thoughts. So then if this observer has interest and there's not full detachment of the thoughts, see if there is a witnesser or an observer of that observer, which, which has no interest in either the interested observer or thoughts, and see if there's any, and see as you go back and as you let go of hooking into thoughts or get into the pure detached witnesser, you'll start to uh, experience that the thoughts will start to disappear and no longer uh, plague you. So this is a, a quality of uh, consciousness that uh, if something is not hooked into or given meaning, then it tends to disappear. Uh, now, you know, uh, everyone's experienced this where on certain, certain days, it seems like one is, everything is flowing by and nothing is being hooked into. And in certain days, it seems like one is hooking into everything that goes on. Every, 
it's almost like the world seems to be heavy. One is hooking into thoughts, into feelings, into the body, into external stimuli very heavily. On other days, it can be what the Course would describe, one is uh, just floating in the hush of heaven. So as you go into the detached, be, be the detached observer, and if you hook back into a thought, it's because a thought has been given special meaning. So just unhook and just be back in the detached witnessing of thoughts and just let them go. They're not important. The next thing is the body. Uh, there's a, you know, one of the favorite things I, uh, the course lessons drum in is I'm not a body. I am free for I am as God created me. And I'm not a body, i.e., you know, it's essentially canceling the belief that one is the body because the addiction to giving meaning or hooking into or identifying with the body is so strong in people, you know, uh, in this world, of, but essentially you could call it separation anxiety when one is hooking into the thoughts and body so, so extremely that one starts to experience the separation. So the body is an object, just like a cloud in the sky. One is aware that it's got a certain sh size and shape and width. Uh, and so one can have awareness of the body. You know, uh, is there awareness of how how tall the body is, or <clears throat> how wide the body is, or the, uh, the location of the body. So that's the object. So can you now be the detached observer of the body? Can you unhook and be in that witnessing of the body, which is not the body? And if this witnessing, which is witnessing, if you like, the shape of the body, if you're in the experience of the witnesser of the body, is this witnesser identifying still with the body? Is it still trying to track or hook into the body? And if it is, that's what I'd call uh, an interested observer in the body. So can you now be the observer of that observer, which has no interest in the body? And as you get to the detached observing uh, of the body, you'll, it'll start to disappear. Or if there's any sensations or feelings or heaviness in the body, uh, then just see if you can be the observer of that. Like if there's a knot in the stomach, see if one can be the observing of the knot. If there's tiredness or any fog or exhaustion, that's like a cloud. But there's something that observes tiredness or fog. So see if you can be, if one can be in the position of the observer. As you be, as you become the observer of, of an object, whether it's tiredness as a cloud or, or a knot in the stomach or the body of thoughts, then there is this freedom and this expansion of consciousness. And as you keep doing the observer exercise, uh, you're going into more of these deeper limitless states. But it, as you get to these more limitless states, even if these limitless states have some kind of limit, see if you can be the observing of that. So what we'll do now is just spend just uh, a minute or so in silence, um, just to soak in that and then we'll continue. 